If you choose to watch till the end of this video or listen to the end of this podcast, I'm going to share the principle that I applied while I was in the midst of this story to grow in all major areas while working between two different locations and over 60 hours a week. So I was just finishing my first year of Thrive. It was about to be summer of 2017. And the thing that I really wanted, I wanted to be making money. I needed to pay off my first year of Thrive, which I still hadn't done at this point, and the support raising uh, stuff hadn't, hadn't fully completed itself yet. I was about halfway through that process. Uh, and if you want to hear more about that, you can click the little card up there. And so I'm still in this process, and I know that I need to work and to be able to do that. And I had this friend who said, hey, I know someone who's looking to hire someone for a kid's camp over the summer. And I went, hey, I'm game for that. He also said it started at 15 an hour. And at that point, two or three years ago, 15 an hour is probably closer to what 20 an hour is now in our current economy. And uh, so I was able to meet with her and I kind of went through the thought process of, man, it's going to make more sense to do this in Northern California than move back home to Southern California and try to find a job there. It's unlikely for me to find a, a similarly paying job down there right away as soon as I get home. And in addition to that, I wanted to stay in the area because I was growing internally as well. I was a part of a small group that was meeting on, I believe it was either Friday nights or Monday nights, and I had actually two groups that were meeting, and I was just growing so much internally, growing in my relationship with the Lord, and and I just didn't want to leave that environment. So being able to find a way to have a job and do that while staying here in Northern California, that was really important to me. So then I'm thinking, oh, cool, I've got this full-time thing in, in the, during the summer, and things changed, shockingly. And the, the kids' camp, the owner thought we would be able to fill it up, and that didn't happen. So it went from seven weeks to then she texted me, okay, we're, we're down to just four weeks. And then it became two weeks that I would be able to work full-time. And then she was like, actually, it, it just doesn't make sense. There's too much competition. Um, so we're not going to do this in Sacramento anymore. So then I'm kind of scrambling uh, because I'd already figured out where I was going to live. Um, and I just because of that growth, I didn't I didn't want to go back to Southern California at this point. And so then I actually had another friend of mine named Omar who said, hey, I think there's this place you could work called Quality First Home Improvement. I went over there and applied and was accepted for that job. So I ended up doing door-to-door -door, um, selling or setting up appointments for someone for a, qual a home improvement company called Quality First Home Improvement. And I did that for most of the summer of 2017. And really because of that, what ended up happening was I did end up getting to work just two weeks of the kids camp during that summer. And I'm really grateful for that because it actually allowed me to leave quality first home improvement really well. I was able to say like, hey, this was the thing that I had originally stayed up here over the summer for. And I was able to write uh, notes to each of my coworkers, thanking them for different things and to my supervisor. And it was the first time in my life that I went, wow, I really left that job really well and it kind of opened up this this way of operating that I've continued since then of making sure that I leave a place better than I found it and that I leave on really good terms because you just never know how things can come back around where um, having that recommendation or having that goodwill just makes a really big difference. So then the next summer, 28 of 2018, comes along and I've accepted a job at Vintage Grace just on Sundays. Uh, if you want to hear more about that, there will be a card up there um, to learn more about that. And so because of that, I'm working 10 hours on Sundays, primarily playing drums. And 
then I'm also going to be in the Bay Area working full time. So I decided to accept that job and do that during the summer. And I knew each Sunday as I was leaving at about 6.15 in the morning that I needed to be fully packed because this was kind of what my my week looked like. I would uh, get two VG by 6.45. There would be three services in the morning, one in the afternoon. So we go from about 6.45 till 1 or 1.30. Then there'd be uh, so that would be three services. Then there'd be rehearsal for the Sunday night service. So that was around 4.30 usually, 4.45, run through the set. Then 5.15, play the last service, be done around 6.30. And then I drive two or three hours to the Bay Area, to San Francisco uh, or San Mateo specifically. Um, and where I was staying was in Burlingame. And Sometimes I'd stop at Trader Joe's to get food, because that's the other thing when you live in two places, you have to have food <laughs> in both places. Um, and then from there, Monday through Friday, I would usually wake up at about 6 a.m. I'd read Bible, read some of another book, sometimes do some sort of movement in the morning, and then uh, work, like I'd leave at about 8, and then actually work from 9 till Five, and then from five to six, there was this extra hour called aftercare, um, which I would do. And that was actually, um, that was really fun getting to do that extra hour. It allowed me to do some fun things with that money. And Tuesdays and Thursdays, after I got home from work, which is around six, six thirty, I would then, I joined a running club. And so I'd run uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Mondays and Wednesdays were a little bit more open. And then Friday night after work, I'd drive back to Sacramento. And then it was, Saturday was basically do laundry, do chores, repack, get prepared for the songs for Sunday, and then do it again. And that was pretty much uh, my summer of 2018 and I I really enjoyed it. It was such a contrast to from being in Thrive and um, really just not making a whole ton of money to going from that to working almost 60 hours a week plus just all the other things and so it was a really kind of a, a cool shift and I was also amazed just in that I was able to really do a good job of maintaining relationships that were important to me and maximizing that drive time. And I'll share a little bit more about that in a moment. But probably one of the, kind of some of the conflict, like it can sound really great, but there's challenges with everything and in every stage. And I think one of the biggest challenges, at least for me, was just never really being in one place. And for me, it meant me having to think like, do I have food in in both places? Um, what of my stuff do I have in both places? Did I forget anything? And, and the other thing was I also lived in the same place with some of the people that I worked with. And so sometimes you get home from work, but then work would keep going because you're around um, them. And so sometimes that was a challenge. It was also like I knew going into it that staying healthy during during this process was going to be really important. And that's why I chose to uh, go to this running store and be a part of these Tuesdays and Thursday runs that they were doing because I knew that putting myself in an environment like that would be really helpful, especially if I didn't feel like doing anything on that Tuesday or Thursday because I was tired but I knew that environment would would pull that out of me, that as soon as people around me are expecting, like if you're at a running store about to do that, people expect you to run. And so it makes it easier to do that when that's just kind of what's normal. And so that was something that I did. Oh, another uh, conflict or thing that I was unsure of in the process was the owner of the kids camp that I was working for, she was in the process of buying a house while I was working there. And so there were a couple of weeks where it was like, 
my pay was accruing, but she had asked like, hey, can I wait to pay you until my house closes? And that kind of took more than, um, I think, a couple of weeks or a month, I can't remember exactly, um, but it was building up to where I was like, hmm, I haven't signed any like binding agreements and uh, so there's there's nothing to hold her to in terms of if she just decided to not pay me um, and she ended up paying me, it was totally fine. Uh, and at the same time when you're doing those weeks consecutively and then you're not sure, it's a little, it's a little concerning. So those were for sure some of the challenges. Um, and kind of the, the things that I achieved or that the person that I became in the process was, was really cool. Um, because of this time I was actually, I was able to fully fund my six month emergency fund, which was the baby step number three. If you know anything about Dave Ramsey, uh, I learned that I really enjoyed being around kids, which was something I really wasn't sure of, like if I could do that well. Um, and I also got to experience like just some really beautiful places in the Bay Area and in San Francisco that, that I truly didn't know existed. And I also, oh, this was such a cool thing. I got to learn more about God because of the kids. In fact, I had this, this one kid in particular and we were on this like hill and there were trees and the sun's kind of shining through uh, the tree leaves, even just kind of how it is right now. And I remember walking and he would hold my hand and he was about four years old. And we were going down this, this pretty steep incline and he would be holding my hand and then just swing out over, like down in front of me over the hill holding my hand. And he would always just go, wee, it's an adventure. And it struck me because in my mind I went, that's how I want to be with God. That when I don't know what's happening or I don't know how the future is going to look or what the next step sometimes in my life are, that I can hold his hand and go, wee, it's an adventure. Instead of, oh my goodness. There's nothing beneath my feet, which the kid could have done. And that both of those things were true, but he had a totally different experience and enjoyed the ride, so to speak, so much more because of how he trusted me and trusted that I would hold him. And that was a really cool lesson to get to learn in, in that way. I also learned how to be disciplined within the structure of working full time and how to prioritize uh, my time with the Lord each morning and just how important that was. Um, I also decided to, for the first time, uh, create something called fun money, which didn't really <laughs> exist in my world before. And so all the money that I made from the aftercare, which was in addition to my uh, salary, I was able to do something fun with, and I actually bought a, uh, a black watch with that money, which was something that I had wanted, and it was just a cool uh, kind of reminder or token of like, hey, this is a really cool time in my life that I, that I want to be able to remember, and so it was pretty exciting to be able to use that money for that purpose. <clears throat> hmm. I also learned that I could become someone who could do so much more in less time and really learned how to leverage the white space in my life. And I found, especially during that period of time, that I had a lot of time where I was driving. And so I would maximize and leverage that time to still do and be the person that I wanted to be. And so whether that was calling family or friends that I was close with from Thrive or just in other areas of my life, I would I would use that time to call people. I would listen to audiobooks or trainings or sermons or the Bible and make sure that I was using that time. And sometimes it would just be being in silence and enjoying the scenery as I was driving. 
but really being intentional with those spaces in my life that I could use in different ways. I also just got to experience how amazing the, the Bay Area was and different nature places within the city were. Uh, I got to go to, uh, I was able to go bike riding in uh, Burlingame in the San Mateo area along the coast. I got, I went to Hutter Park, Cortella Redwood State Park, uh, Mavericks Beach, Coyote Point, uh, Pescadero Beach, and that was actually, that's my favorite beach that I've been to. If you're looking for a beach in the Bay Area to go to, that's my favorite as well as Russian Ridge Preserve. And I probably just wouldn't have found any of these places if I hadn't worked there and been going there as a, as a part of my work with the kids, taking them there. And then the other thing was I got to test drive a Porsche while I was there, or a Porsche while I was there. And that was just so epic. I, <laughs> I love cars. And I'd actually test driven a, diff, a similar Porsche in the Sacramento area. And man, those cars are so fun. And yeah, I didn't just want to do this job well, but I wanted to make sure that I became a better person in the process. And so what does this mean for you? Like, I know you've heard this story and, and that's that's great for me, but what, what's in that for you? And so I kind of have this one application of what was what was the thing that allowed me to continue to grow and develop even in the midst of this craziness and in the midst of this time. And really it was this concept that for me, I needed motivation like I need oxygen. Like it was that important that I could not survive if I didn't have the motivation in my life to get up and read Bible and to go run and to do these things. And so what were the ways that I maintained that motivation and took it that seriously? So there were three main things that I did to maintenance my motivation, which were I made sure I had the right people around me, number one. I had went to the right places that motivated me, number two. And I did the right activities that motivated me. So people, places, and activities. So people that was like calling uh, friends or family on the phone. Um, people that I knew loved and cared about me. That was motivating. Number two, places. So that can be, that was going to the beach, um, going to nature. Like that, those places inspire me. They bring life and motivation for me to be able to keep doing the things that are important to me. And then number three is activities. And so that can be exercising, like running, that can also be doing fun things like test driving a Porsche, because for me, that's really motivating. Maybe for you, it's going and looking at cool houses, or maybe it's um, a specific cause that really, like, really makes a difference. You're like, oh my goodness, I want to be able to make a difference in this, like whatever those things are. And then in addition to the people, places, and activities, if there are specific things that I wanted to do, I would also use this pain pleasure principle, which is the idea that we will do more to avoid pain than we will to go towards pleasure. And so if there was something I wanted to do, like I wanted to run at least the two times that week, I could go, hey, text a friend, call a friend and tell them, hey, if I don't do this, I'm gonna Venmo you $100. Or like I wanted to like whatever the thing is you can, or you can say, hey, I'm gonna donate $100 towards this cause that I hate if I don't do this thing that I've said I'm gonna do. Uh, and there can also be like a, a pleasure side of it. If, if I do do this thing, then I'm gonna get to do this good thing. So you can use those together or in isolation, but if you're only gonna use one, pain is more effective than pleasure. Because just as humans will do more to avoid pain than to run towards pleasure. And then the last thing is to raise the, the temperature by publicly announcing it. So I kind of did this, uh, or I didn't kind of, I did this earlier this week uh, on my Instagram and I said, hey, by December 31st, I wanna have 100 subscribers on this YouTube channel. So that's a way of publicly announcing, this is the goal, this is what I'm wanting to do. And so if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, please do that. Uh, it would mean so much to me and I want to build a community of people that are going to actually take this and apply 
one of these concepts. So please, in, in the comments below, let me know what is the activity, what's the thing you want to do, and then either put some level of pain or pleasure or both of what you're going to do. And then the key is to do something, one of these things, the people, places, activity, on some level on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis. Because when this is maintained and sustained over a long period of time, it makes a massive difference. So my prayer for us is that we would be people who live by faith, are known by love, and are voices of hope, that we would dream great dreams and have the courage to go after them. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this video. I'm very grateful for you if you've made it all the way to the end, and I will see you next week with something new. Adios.